Hello, and welcome to another edition of Living History. I'm Karen Cohen, the principal at Rice Elementary School, and I am honored today to have with us Mr. Ed Rice, who the school was named after. Welcome, Ed. Thank you. Pleased to have you. And to have a couple of students from Rice Elementary, sixth grade students, here with me to help interview Mr. Rice. I have John Benton Brittenham and Jessica Shea. So welcome John Benton and Jessica. Mr. Rice, could you start out by telling us a little bit about your experience teaching and being a principal? I know that a lot of that experience was in Poudre School District. Could you just kind of recap that experience for us? Yes, I could do that. When I got out of college, I was 26 years old because I had been in the service and I had to work my way through school. Uh, I had interviewed at three different places, Yuma, Grover, and Minotaur, Nebraska. And all of them offered me contracts. Wow. But I went to Minotaur, Nebraska because I was able to be a head football, head basketball, and uh -huh. head track coach and athletic director at the school. Wow. So that's where we went. We packed up, moved to Minotaur, Nebraska. After one year, I got a call from Putter R1, Don Weber, said there was an opening at LaPorte High School in LaPorte, and that I, if I wanted the job to interview with Mr. Pope. And so I did that, and I got that job. So we moved back to the Fort Collins area. In three years, the school closed up. In fact, Wellington High School, Waverly, LaPorte, all closed when Poudre High School opened. All the students went into Poudre High School then. And so I was transferred into Poudre High School as head basketball and assistant football. And I taught there, I did that for three years. And then an opening administration came up. And I had gotten my administrative degree meanwhile. And so I decided I'd be an administrator. Mm -hmm. And so I was assistant principal at Poudre High School until 1973. And then, lo and behold, Rocky Mountain High School opened. And we had more administrators than what we needed at Pooter because a lot of the students were then going on to Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. And so I volunteered to go to Rocky Mountain High School. In fact, I was the second person hired at Rocky Mountain. Wow. And I was there four years, and then wham. Uh, Don Weber, the superintendent, he was superintendent then, called me and said he wanted me to go to Wellington Junior High School as principal. And so I said no at first. <laughs> I said when I left Wellington uh, 22 years ago, I said I'll never be back. Well, I, I decided over the weekend with a lot of phone calls to people that I would go to Wellington Junior High and I loved it there. And I was there for nine years. And then Pooter High School opened up. The guy that hired me, Mr. Pope, was retiring. And mm -hmm. so I applied and I got the job as principal of Pooter High School. And I was there for six years. And I retired in 1992. Wow. That's, that's impressive, and, and now you're back at Wellington at back Rice. Back at Wellington, All right. that's exactly right. I can't seem to get away. That's right, <laughs> that's great. Well, I'm going to let Jessica and John Benton now ask some questions, so if you guys have questions for Mr. Rice, go ahead. Why did you decide to be a teacher? You know, I had gone to CSU for a year, right out of high school, and I was in engineering. And somehow it didn't feel right. I was doing okay in school, but it didn't seem right. And uh, I thought I was more of a people person than the type of guys that the engineers are. And so I decided to take a break. I would have to go in the Army anyway. The draft was going to take me. Mm -hmm. So I, dis I joined the Army. And during those three years, I matured a lot did a lot of thinking, and decided I wanted to be a teacher. 
because of the influences of the teachers that I had at Wellington High School. And so that's how I decided to be a teacher. Very good. Um, uh, I have a question. Um, what college did you go to and where did you, and where did you get a teaching degree? Okay, Colorado State University. I got a degree in uh, uh, PE, physical education, and minors in science, biological science, physical science, mathematics, and health. I had minors in all of those. And uh, I felt that with uh, more things that I could teach, it would be easier to mm -hmm. get a job. And it turned out to be absolutely true. I loved mathematics and science. That was, that was my first love. But being a coach, mm -hmm. physical education was a natural thing. So when you um, got that degree in math and science, then is that what you taught? Did you teach yes, math and science I, then? I taught math and science mostly. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, when I went to Pooter, it was all math after that. Okay. And I felt very lucky. I was, I had students waiting to get into my class. Wow. And uh, I had to teach the non-learners, mm -hmm. the slow learners, the fast learners, and the average learners. I had classes in all of those. and. Uh, I remember in business math one year, I had 43 students wow. in wow. business math. <laughs> That's more than my class. That wouldn't happen oh. now, but uh, <laughs> no. it did then. Right, <laughs> exactly. How did teaching change your character and personality? Well, I'm not so sure it changed my character because when I graduated from CSU at 26, my character <laughs> pretty much had been decided. But my personality had to change a little bit in that I had to work with all types of students, all types, and get along with them, that they would want to learn from me. And I was one of those guys that really stressed the uh, basics in a subject area mm -hmm. for a long time to begin with, so that they really understood some basic principles of something. And then after that, we went faster and faster. And that seemed to work for me, and it worked for the students. And that's why I had a lot of students that wanted to be in my classes. Parents would specifically ask for me, especially in geometry. Uh -huh. yeah, Learning geometry those proofs, of those huh? <laughs> that's exactly right. And I love those proofs. I that's mean, I, great. I was a whiz at them, OK? Huh. <laughs> must, have about a, must have been a lot of pressure. There was a lot of pressure uh, teaching, you bet there is. Mm -hmm. Because uh, at that time when I was teaching, I was also coaching football, basketball. Wow. Yeah. And the football at Poudre High School, you know, is a pretty big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I counted my hours one year, and I spent 40 hours a week in football. Wow. And then, of course, I had my preparation, I had my uh, class uh, rosters to keep up, I had my grades to turn in on time, I had papers to grade, and my wife did a lot of help with mm -hmm. me on helping grading papers, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday evening, that's what we I did. I believe it, <laughs> yeah. Um, did serving your country affect your teaching, and how? I think it did. Uh, for one thing, I wouldn't have been in teaching if I hadn't have gone into the mm -hmm. service because it gave me a chance to mature. I think the other thing that it did is that it really gave me a focus on what I wanted to do. Also taught me a lot of self-discipline because in the service, if you don't have self-discipline, somebody else disciplined you. And so, and I think that's important in schools now also, that if you don't have your own self-discipline, then somebody else has to do it for you. And sometimes that isn't very pleasant. So I learned very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helped me in, the, in teaching, it really did. How did it feel when you found out that there was going to be a school named after you? Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, first of all, I thought it was a dream, OK? I couldn't believe it was happening to a little farm boy from Wellington who grew up north of Wellington. And 
I just didn't think it would happen, that I would wake up from this dream and it wouldn't be true. But after it sort of settled in, it, I realized how big an honor that was. And very few people get that honor that of teaching. If you look at the thousands of people that have taught in the schools in Fort Collins and surrounding areas, and how few schools there are that are named after those people. It, it is really an honor, absolutely. I couldn't believe it. Must be. <laughs> um, how is Rice different from any schools you attended in your time in your elementary schools? Oh, <laughs> well, I, growing up in Wellington, uh, first of all, we walked most of the time to school. No matter how far it was, you walked because there were no buses. And if your parents worked, sometimes on bad days, they would, they would take me to school. Uh, the other thing was, of course, no technology. Everything mm -hmm. was handwriting. I think sometimes that's good because I look at my own grandchildren and they do so <laughs> much on computers, their handwriting is not very good. And at, at that time, everything was by hand. So that, that really changed. The teachers were good at that time, but some of the things that you guys are doing in the sixth grade right now, we didn't get that until we were in junior high and lower grades in high school. Like in sixth grade, you know, we, you're way ahead of what we ever were. Did you get Eco then, Week? What's that? Did you get Eco Week? Yeah, we didn't get Eco Week. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our Eco Week was a week uh, outside of school where everybody left and went and uh, did the sugar beets. We had a week off so that everybody worked in the sugar beet fields and get that crop in. Wow. That was always in the October. Hmm. So, oh, Eco Week, no. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. If you hadn't have been an educator, what would you have chosen to do? You know, I don't know. My dad, when, uh, when I went to college, he said, why don't you stay and take over the farm? We had a great farm north of Wellington. And I had decided, I think, that I didn't want to do that. So that's where I was confused. I was good in math, and so I told you that I had gone to CSU, and I loved mathematics, and I went into engineering. I had done some tests in high school, some aptitude tests that ask you a list of 200 questions of, do you like this, do you like this, do you like this? and it. It told me that I should go to work for the government and to be FBI or Secret Service or one of those things. But in Wellington, it seemed like that was so far away that it was unreachable, mm -hmm. that I couldn't do something like that. And I wish that uh, uh, maybe that I'd had more opportunities to see what I could have done in that. But as things worked out, as you know, it worked out for the best. Mm -hmm. It absolutely worked out for the best. When, uh, when I was uh, talking about the sugar beets, it reminds me of, of uh, the time I grew up about a quarter mile north of where the school is now. Mm -hmm. And I started working the sugar beets when I was five years old. And I crawled the beet rows, thinning the beets, Wow. making them so that they're eight to ten inches apart mm -hmm. and that type of thing. And I did that until I was 18 years old. And we always worked the sugar beets right after school was out. And if we got done by the 4th of July, that was the key, we got a dollar each, I and my brother, to spend oh, for the 4th yeah. of July. <laughs> now things were not quite... Uh, as expensive as they are now. So a dollar went a long way. And if we did a good job on Saturdays when we went into Fort Collins to shop, we, I got a quarter for me and my brother to go to the movies 
on Saturday afternoon. Wow. There was always a cowboy movie on at the Lyric Theater. That cost nine cents each. Wow. Then I bought a, <laughs> I bought a, some jujiber beans, and we divided that. That was a nickel, and two pieces of bubble gum, <laughs> and that was a quarter. So that was our quarter for the week, and that was our entertainment. Otherwise, it was chores on the farm, milking, feeding, working in the fields. I, I think I understand why you told your dad you didn't want to take over the farm. <laughs> <laughs> it was the dairy work, the dairy yeah. work that gets you I, because it's I seven days a week. Yes, it is. Twice a day, and you never get a break. Nope. Never get a break. Not even to eat. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but you not, don't get vacation. You don't no get a summer vacation. No trips, nothing like that. Right. In Saturdays. fact, you know, I, north of Wellington, I only live 28 miles from Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see Cheyenne until I was 19 years old. Wow. 28 miles away. So we just didn't get to go very much, you know. Mm -hmm. Go to Fort Collins and that was it. Right. John Benton, I think you have another question yet. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice do you have for students today? Boy, that's, uh, that's a great question. I would say one thing, be honest and trustworthy. And like the service academy say, don't lie, steal, or cheat. Lie, cheat, or steal. <laughs> if you make a mistake, own up to it. Take responsibility, apologize, and learn from that mistake. Make friends with a large group of people. Don't be one of those persons that have a clique and you only friends with those. Now, I don't mean to say close friends, but I mean you yeah, want to be friendly with a wide group of kids. You'll have some close friends. And in order to be, have close friends, you have to be a friend yourself. And so it's important to do that. Also, uh, I think that's about it. Work hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Learn as much as you can, because you never know what, what twists in life come about. I never dreamed, of course, when I was in high school that I was going to be a teacher or a principal. And so you never know. I have, I remember I had a student come back to me from uh, uh, the service. He was in the Navy. And he had a chance to be in the first atomic submarine. Wow. To be on the crew. And he had to take a test to get on there. And he didn't do very well in the geometry. There was a lot of geometry in it. So he came back, said, Mr. Rice, why didn't you make me learn more in your geometry class. <laughs> I said, Kelly, I tried to. <laughs> I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. And he, I gave him an old geometry book. He took it home and studied it and took the test again and passed it. And so he got to have his dream fulfilled by being a crew member on that first atomic submarine wow. in That's the early great. 60s. That's, That's awesome. That's cool. Well, I think our time is about up. So I want to thank you for your information. I think it's been great. I think we've all enjoyed listening to what life was like and how it's different. And we want you to know that we're very proud and very honored to be at Rice Elementary School because we think it was aptly named. And you're well deserving of the honor of having a school named after you. You're too kind, no. but thank you. And thank you too for being here, okay? Thank you for joining us on this edition of Living History. And please feel welcome, anyone in the community, to come and visit Rice Elementary School. Um, John Benton and Jessica would love to give you a tour of the school, and we'd like to show off our beautiful building and all of the great learning that's going on there.